Hey everybody, it is Rudy Rodriguez Showmont here with Nick Taylor and the Come On Now, the podcast. We wanted to circle back with you guys after the Super Bowl. Give us our give you give you our perspective on what we thought happened in that game because we're gonna this will be a special specific to the Super Bowl. And at the same time, then we can jump into the, in our next episode, hit on topics for the future because we're going to knock out the Super Bowl tonight. Uh, Donald, Donald, our our compadre, is still under the flu game, um, <laughs> but he will be back tomorrow. But we saw the game last night. So the Chiefs McCool. have repeated. Patrick Mahomes showed you he is that guy. And there is nothing that anyone can say about it. I have to eat my crow. And be unhappy about it. I'll get over it. I'm already over it. It is what it is. They had a they they won the game. Mahomes played like the guy he is in those last two drives to win the game. But Nick, what were your thoughts of how this Super Bowl game went? Um, overall opinion, and then of course hit on whatever things that you you remember specifically that stood out to you. Man, the Super Bowl was amazing, man. It turned out to be all that we could ask for. The game at first started off a little slow. I mean, we had a little bit of fireworks early, but nobody cashed in on it. We had a turnover here, and we had a turnover there, both sides. So it both played out right right after a big bomb, about 40, 50 yards to their, to their receiver. Um, and then the 49ers driving early, and then they fumbled also. Um, oh, that was to the 49ers player, and then the other one was the KC drive. Um, the game was great. It started off slow, like I said, and then it came along, right? As soon as that fumble happened in the third quarter, it was like the fireworks was unleashed. I mean, everything started happening after that moment. The game picked up. Um, coaches made mistakes. Um, players made mistakes. But players played hard, and that's all we could ask for. Um, it was real intense. It came down to the end. We had a conversation last week. Who would you rather have, Purdy or Mahomes? And I said you'd rather have Mahomes. And we also said, who would I pick for the last week? And I said, I'm not betting against Mahomes. I done learned this lesson already. I learned it last week. I learned it the week before. I'm not betting against that guy. The man came out and put the team on his back when it seemed like all hell was going loose. The 49ers, D-line was amazing. It looked like the Tampa Bay game, Super Bowl all over again. That's all I thought in my mind. I said, damn, the pass rush is getting there. They're eating him up. He has no time. He's running for his life. He's throwing intentional grounding passes he's throwing the ball over the field he can't he has no time to get anywhere Kelsey is a non-freaking factor at this moment and everything was going the 49ers way they couldn't have wrote up a better script unless they capitalized on a capital a couple of those possessions when it was up 10 zip but and put them away but other than that you can't write it any better any better better way than it was it was up 10 zero the momentum was on their way Chase Young looked like Lawrence Taylor at first. I And I just called him out last week. I said, Chase Young, that's that was a waste of a draft, a couple of draft picks. He's not really doing anything for them. But he stepped up in the biggest moment, especially in the first half, and they had KC on the ropes. And Mahomes get a, you get a field goal right before the half, which is big, and that changes the game. It changes the momentum. Well, at least we thought it did. But then he came out right in the third quarter and threw an interception. And we're like, well, the 49ers has a chance to put the game away again. Purdy and the guys. But they couldn't do it, mustered up anything really. And it just goes to show what we've been talking about all year, or well, at least the last few weeks of the year, where I think we really recognize that the Kansas City defense are for real, or is for real. <laughs> Kansas City defense is amazing. They stepped up the whole year. They haven't gave up really any points, really. And I told you that they don't give up much yards. And they stepped up every moment they needed to to keep the game you know, under control for Mahomes to do his thing at the end. And he did. So going into those final two possessions of the Chiefs, who was your MVP for the Chiefs if they were to win that game? Which they did, but we were talking about it in – we're looking at like who who the hell's the MVP this game? Because then up into that final drive, Mahomes had yeah. not it was the guy really done who, anything. It was the guy who was on the defensive line on the other <laughs> wrecking show, the shot. 
He controlled the game. Which, which one? Chris Jones? Chris Jones controlled. Chris Jones, I thought was the MVP until that he point. He caused havoc. He kept them in the game, almost single-handedly him. McDuffie, Sneed, um, those a good group of DBs that they have. Like, it's really tough to throw on those guys because they can lock up man-to-man all game with those two guys. So you got Debo out there, you got IU, and you could take them completely out of the game. Um, a person who didn't step up, I think, could have made bigger plays was Kittle. I don't – where was he? I, I, you, you got me. One of the uh, best tight ends in the league for the past four, five, six years, and he just totally mm-hmm. disappeared in my mm-hmm. eyes. I mean, the big plays that you needed from him, you, you couldn't get it out of him. Um, and you already know you, that's going to happen because you have the two good corners out there. So who else is going to generate something? And they really couldn't get anything. They got Jennings to, to, to make some plays. But other than that, no, they tried to go to McCaffrey. And I, I'm, not mad at me. I'm not even mad at Shanahan like I was for the previous Super Bowl when I felt that he abandoned the run game. I know you're going to come in here and say that he did, but he still found ways to get McCaffrey touches. He had 30 touches at the end of the day. He just didn't win the game. And I think, like, I, like we just said, to get back to the question, that Jones would have been the MVP. but. Mahomes had led the team in rushing, threw for over 300 yards, a couple touchdowns. I mean, you got to get the man the, the, the MVP. Up, up until that point, I thought Chris Jones, I mean, he, he single-handedly on three specific pass plays where if Purdy had a split second longer, he probably hits a touchdown on three different passes. Definitely. And Chris Jones happened to be in the backfield each time. He wasn't faked out by it. He made great plays. And what kills me is, like, I listen to shows like, I do watch First Take, even though at times it drives me crazy. But I watched them this morning, or I saw a clip because I didn't watch it. I was still getting over my uh, depression from last night. Um, I heard them, Dan Arlovsky, arguing with Shannon Sharp. I swear to God, at times I wondered, did Shannon Sharp play football? Because some of the stuff he says is just downright outlandish. Now, People will go back and say, well, I chose Brock Purdy. Let's be real. We're a debate conversation. I got to be able to argue one side or the other. We want to. We don't want to agree on everything. So let's let's keep it real. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. Everybody would want Patrick Mahomes. But he had not been playing as well as Brock Purdy in the playoffs. That was the way I felt. And I thought Brock Purdy played exceptionally well. I didn't think he played a bad game. He had a 70 QBR. Like, he had a 70 QBR. He had that one throw. That's the only one. I guess you could kind of feel like Garoppolo when he missed that throw a few years ago. The one overthrow in the end zone. Other than that, he yeah, played. that was with that was Chris Jones who was yeah. smashing into him. Exactly. And that's what, what what kills me is like Chad Sharp is making these comments about yeah, how you got to make that throw. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You you've never played quarterback clearly exactly. because Orlowski, who's played quarterback, is here saying, "What are you talking about?" How can he I- has said. Like, he had a 70 QBR. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and, and Tua combined had a 43 QBR. Against that and defense. Against that defense. Against pressure, Brock Purdy's QBR was 75. Those three guys against that defense, against pressure, their QBR was six. How can you sit here and say that kid didn't play a great game? He played a great game. Yeah. I, 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 they had the lead twice in the fourth quarter. You have an extra point block. You give up a freaking bullshit free touchdown on a punt. Like, those are the types of things we talk about split-second focus losses. I don't want to hear that guy saying, well, I didn't hear my my, my return man yelling, Peter, Peter, Peter. I guess that's their term there. Like, I, I don't want to hear that. You didn't know where the ball is, dude. No, Rudy. Like, you're blocking. You're not looking for the But ball. he wasn't blocking anybody at that moment. At the last moment, he went to go block the guy. He tried to go latch on. And when God. he went to latch on, it was unfortunate. Sometimes, sometimes it's just unfortunate <clears throat> if you're rooting for the team or the and if you And if you didn't hear it, though, I'm saying if you didn't hear it, yeah. I mean, did the guy not yell it? Now, the compounded error was the return man trying to pick it up. He has to dive. Fall on the ball, bro. Yeah. Like, you got to fall on the ball. At that moment. If you, it's already like this, bad. Oh, like Not this, a, you minimize the mistake that's already Yeah. Bad. Like what's like what happens? You fall on the ball, the play's done, you get the ball. I mean, your field position really wasn't gonna be different, realistically. They he was gonna catch the ball. 
probably at the 13 or 14 yard line, and that's where they got the fumble recovery. I, I just fall on the ball. I just that made no sense to me. Um, overall, I thought the 49ers in the first half were absolutely dominant. The defensive line and both sides of the ball, they were controlling the line of scrimmage. I was texting you, Chase Young is having a game. Yeah. I mean, I thought, I mean, Bosa was getting held the entire game. There's video clip after clip after clip of him just being flat out held. Mind you, holding happens. I get it. But it seems like there's a lot of them that, I mean, he got held the whole game. Now, that said, the, the fumbles between McCaffrey and Pacheco, they wiped themselves. Mm -hmm. You cannot have that happen on special teams. San Francisco lost this game on special teams. It's unfortunate. I, they lost it on special teams. 1,000%. I'll say the big mistake was the, the, the miss PAT. The, the, the fumble, it, it can happen, man. It's just, it's just the game that we play. A short kick is the worst thing that can happen to the punt return team because you're blocking, you're blocking, you're blocking, you're blocking gunners. You're not even paying attention. <laughs> play short, Peter, Peter, Peter. At the last second, it's a, the ball's already coming down and it hits you. Like, you could try to get out of the way and you could run right where the ball was going to go anyway. You don't know where, where the bounce is going to happen. So sometimes they... Wouldn't, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you just go way outside? You don't know where... Like, not goes. towards your punt you returner? Know, he was already locked in to go block the, the, the gunner. So when he's going to block the gunner, it just happened. You try to latch on and the ball just hit him. It, 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 sometimes you get bad bounces. And that's why we say you have to be lucky to win a championship. Any any sport, you have to be lucky. You have to be lucky. It's better to be lucky than good because that wasn't a skill thing. That was no. a silly, crazy, flukish not, thing that happens yes. with a football. And it somehow always lands on Mahomes' lap. <laughs> because until that point, he hadn't done anything. No. He had not done anything. It was 10-6. Yeah. It was 10-6. And that woke him up. They score immediately. It's 13-10. But the Niners go right back down. They finally remembered we got to run the ball and make it 16-13. You have the extra point blocked because he didn't put it high enough. That was on him. That wasn't on the line. No. He kicked that ball way too low. Yeah. you got to get the ball on you. I mean, this is a guy that made 55-yard field goal, 53-yard field goal, and yet he on an extra point, he doesn't lift the ball. Yeah. That's, just un that's unforgivable. The 49ers had the Chiefs <clears throat> flustered. Flustered. You had Kelsey. Let me let me, let me go into that. Okay. He had, he had one catch at halftime for one yard. Okay. Mind you, they lost the Niners lost Dre Greenlaw to a torn Achilles coming off the sideline, which was so sad because that's the guy who was covering Travis Kelsey. I text you immediately and said and, Achilles. I, I, I had I missed it. I turned away, and then I'm like, "Why is he on the ground? Lay on the ground." Then I saw the replay of it later on. I'm like, "Oh, his shit just went bah!" And you saw it, but it, it's really frustrating because you're sitting here and you're saying this team should be up seventeen nothing, right? It, it should be seventeen zero at halftime, and it's not. Even on that deep ball to Nicole Hardman that um that that uh Mahomes threw, and they fumbled it like what a play or two later. Yeah. What was the safety? He stopped running. That would have been an interception. I think he lost the ball. He he, he was perfect position, and then he stopped. I don't know if he was already close. It was like, what in the world, bro? I don't know if he was already supposed to be high. <clears throat> he sucked up by the play action, and then he realized, oh, shoot, let me get back, and it was about to make a great play, and then he just lost it. He just simply lost it. I don't know if the lights got in his eyes. He lost it was, the ball. It was wild. He just stopped because if he ran, he's – Waiting been for there. it. Been there. Yeah. Waiting for it. So my problem with what San Francisco did was the third quarter. More than anything. You are dominating the game. You intercept the ball. You're at the Chiefs 44. To not get a field goal there is inexcusable. You have to get three points. You got to have three points. And it starts off with them deciding, we're not going to run the ball. Why in the world are you not going to run the ball? I mean, like they ran the, they, they threw the ball nine plays of their first 10 in the second half. I know you were telling me that they were being bottled up. I don't care. You've got to, I don't, I don't even, I don't care. I, I don't care because you know what that tells me is when you don't believe in your running game because he ended up with 22 carries for 80 yards. That's under four yards of carry. He had eight catches though. I think eight catches for another 80 yards. Exactly. So he had 30 touches for 160. 
you got to run the ball. Like they, I, on first down from the forty-four yard line, you run the ball. Like they decided. I don't know what Shanahan was in his brain because he wasn't throwing swing passes. He was. It was not. It was. It just didn't look like they had any idea of what they really wanted to do. Because if you score after that pick at the forty-four yard line, the game might be over. If you score a touchdown, the game might be over. Rudy. Um. They tried. They tried they, to run the ball. They how did they try to run the ball? They did not run the ball they listen, on, they, for the whole quarter. Look, look at the third quarter. Look at the plays that happened. They literally <laughs> they literally got in bad situations every time, not from, like, trying to throw deep. It was, like, short but pass. Like, first and was, 10, run the ball. They ran, you gotta keep, they ran it one time. They got a yard. They, they were, ran it one time in their first not, 10 they, plays in the second they, half. They, they, and they, they, they ran they, it three straight times on the, from the 44. And a false start. They because threw it. They I'm sorry, they start. threw it. They threw it. They, they got the false start and threw off the drive on second down. Well, the first play was a pass. You should have run the ball. And I'm still I am still going to run the ball on second down because I have to keep – Chris, they were rearing they back got, on their asses. They got seven yards on the next play. They threw it to McCaffrey. They got seven yards. I I'm, I'm, I, I think they, they blew it by not running the ball in the third quarter. They they threw it They threw it nine times of ten plays in the third quarter, the first I mean, ten plays. And that, was, that equated to punt, punt, three and out, three and out, then you give up a field goal drive to KC. Then again, punt. Now you've your defense gets you the ball back. You muff the punt, and then I mean, you get the ball back. You ex- have the extra point blocked. One of the plays that messed them up. Also, they threw a short pass to Jennings over there. And he broke a tackle, and unfortunately, he was going backwards when he broke the tackle. So he yeah, he lost eight it. yards. He lost <laughs> eight yards. Exactly. So, you know, like, but I'm not throwing I, again. I. I you you need to keep Patrick Mahomes off of the field, and you're not going to keep him off the field. And and while 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 the clock is running, these again incomplete passes, clock's not moving. I, I I thought Shanahan and I praised Shanahan. I thought he completely shit the bed in the third quarter. In the third quarter, he shit the bed. So after Kansas City scored, they decided to run the ball again. And they went right down the field and scored. On that drive, they didn't run the ball like that. They got like it's not, a, it's not about running the ball like that. It's about just running the ball. I mean, they but they 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 got most of their yards off throws from Purdy on that drive. To be honest, <laughs> oh, okay. But flat, again, flat, another under like they got most of their yards, and then I think McCaffrey got one for like eight yards and one for five yards and a yard. He had a yard carry, a five yard <laughs> carry, and then like an eight yard carry. If I think. Of it. Okay, so let's see here. It's a 12-play drive, Purdy for a short pa- pass incomplete. Mm-hmm. McCaffrey up the, up the middle for five, Purdy for 17, Purdy for nine, mm-hmm. Juzik for two. Juzik ran the ball for okay. two. And that's that's second, and two, second and one. Yeah, he that. ran the ball first down. First 10-10, Purdy deep down the middle to Ayuk for 20. Mm-hmm. Purdy incomplete. McCaffrey left for eight yards. McCaffrey for minus one. Uh, Purdy incomplete. McCaffrey for one yard. Touchdown. Mm-hmm. But they ran the ball. Again, you, if you don't run the ball, they're not going to play it. If you just throw the ball. Like, I, I, I'm a Dolphins fan. I got to watch Dan Marino throw the ball 50 times a game, and you and no one ever ran the ball. If you, you know how many times Pacheco ran it? 18 times. You know, and mind you, I think at the end they weren't they weren't really going to run it. But I thought that third quarter by not running it cost them majorly. That first possession, especially from the forty four yard line, you got to get points. You got to get points, of course. Um, but in the end of it, they take the lead, and then all of a sudden, now San Fran's D line can't get anywhere near Mahomes. Nowhere near him. They Nowhere near him, and he is to get away with it. Well, they would get pressure uh, earlier. So they could run their zone. Well, you can't run a zone without pressure. If you don't get no. pressure in a zone, you might as well be playing uh, shooting the ball from the free throw line. <laughs> you know, but what, what what killed me? So they get the lead back again. It's mm-hmm. nine, so it's sixteen sixteen now. It's nineteen sixteen, and you're sitting here. First of all, I didn't like if I didn't like what San Fran did on third down. I probably would have run the ball, believe it or not, because I would have seen if I could get to, if I can't get the first down. If I can get four yards and make it a fourth and one, it was third and five. If I can get, because they're expecting now a pass. If I can get three, four yards, they might be blitzing on top of that. Were they, did they blitz? They did blitz. They did blitz. They did blitz. 
He came with the stunt to the B gap. They blitz. So and and they're gonna bl- they, you, I figured they blitz. If you can bust one tackle or they hit the wrong hole, you'd have a touchdown or a first down. What's the worst? It's fourth and one now. Now you could get stuffed. You could. You could you could get stuffed. But I would have run the ball there for two reasons. One, I'm gonna keep the clock moving unless Casey calls a timeout. If I don't get the first down, it's now fourth down and one. Fourth and two. Let's say it's fourth and one, fourth and two. And they don't and they don't call a timeout. You just knocked off 45 seconds from the clock. That's one. Two, it now it makes you think, let's line up, see if we get them jump off sides, and we get a free first down. Now the game is over. Mm-hmm. Where do you think a field goal to win this game? Just the way the same way the Chiefs won it last year over Philadelphia. Ran down two minutes to the last second to kick a 25, what, 25, 30 yard field goal. That's probably what the way I would have gone because they were bringing pressure and it was affecting him in the second half. Cause I mean, it was, it was fast. Yeah. It wasn't like they were getting through almost every time when they yeah. brought pressure. They were stuck the wrong way. They weren't it, getting enough protection. It, right? They weren't it, seeing the blitz it, coming. I mean, yeah. credit to the Chiefs defense for hiding their, their blitzes. I mean, and them not mm-hmm. seeing it or coming off guard mm-hmm. with it. Um, another thing, man, I mean, the 49ers had their chances. They, they did. A bundle of chances. And even on that fourth and one, where KC kept the ball in Mahomes' hand, like, were they going to run it? Hell no. They kept the ball in Mahomes' mm-hmm. hand, and they had their two best players involved in it. Did had, that play not – that bothered me. It bothered me. Go ahead. Kelsey and Mahomes. And it was going to be in a play. But what, what, what happened was they ran like a fly sweep off of it with the RPO, and Bosa went flying down the line – to go chase down the tackle, like I know, if anything, he probably had a kill technique, or he just he was just a read man. But he made that read so easy for Mahomes because he went chasing down the line a receiver or whoever that was that went on the jet sweep that he was never going to catch from the back. Anyway, that was wasn't that Kelsey? No, Kelsey came because because it was we remember when Mahomes came around the yeah, side, but and Kelsey looked like he was running. He ran a, a little out right there. No, he just came over on a like they call it a like a behind the line. Uh, it was like one of those little well, juke, little short, yeah, little like, short routes where if you don't take Mahomes, yeah, he's gonna and dump. you and you leave Kelsey. Kelsey dump. would have had a thirty yard game. He, but, was, he was wide no, open on the routes. But, but Bosa did nothing. He didn't hit. He could have hit Kelsey. <laughs> he didn't hit or, anybody. Or he should have <laughs> went for Mahomes. Like he should have <laughs> went on the kill technique where he should go straight for Mahomes. Or he he bombs he bombs Kelsey. But he mm-hmm. didn't either. He went chasing down the line of scrimmage of somebody that he was never gonna catch. So mm-hmm. I don't know what his read was on that play, but he. Totally blew that situation. He didn't even make he didn't even make Mahomes have to read anything. It was like an open book test, like an open book test that he gave him. Like the answer was right there, run the ball. <laughs> to me, to me, that play was like if you didn't think the ball would be in Patrick Mahomes' hands, you don't watch football. Of course, like this is our season. I'm not going to hand football. the ball to Isaiah Pacheco for my season. I got. I'm gonna have my six foot five QB that no one can hit, <laughs> that no one's permitted to hit, um, and I'm gonna have him. Well, and the thing is, and the thing is, well, he slid. He he slid. But the thing is, I thought like it's common sense. You're gonna have people playing over Kelsey, and have someone watching Mahomes. So and you did neither. <laughs> you did neither. In that second half, I don't know. If they ever, they had. They never did. Did they, they double the Kelsey the whole game? Uh, so the first half they played great. Like, I don't know if the Greenlaw, like we said, the Greenlaw injury happened and affected it. But Warner mm-hmm. was covering him also a couple times. It was pretty solid. I'm like, damn, flanking mm-hmm. him. But and when it came to the second half, for you not to have him in double coverage and you let somebody else beat you, Rasheed Rice have to beat you, uh, MVS have to beat you. McCole Harmon has to beat you. You have to make those guys beat you. you I'm not, I'm, I am bracketing. We're running a bracket coverage on Kelsey. One guy's on his inside, one guy's on his outside. You really don't have to worry about him running past you. You just have to worry about him breaking inwards on, on digs and, and outs. Like that's that's basically what he's going to kill you at or stop. Or, you know, he got a couple of double moves in there, but he's not killing you with speed, except for with the little under that they threw to him and he was sprinting off. But other than that, there are- you have, two to, plays. you have to take them out of the game. There were two plays that, that stood out to me. Mm-hmm. First off, I thought they should have been double-teaming Kelsey the entire second half. 
Someone else is going to have to win this game. You're not going to be throwing the ball to Kelsey and have him catch eight passes in the second half for like 90-some-odd yards. Like, that's not going to happen, and that can't happen. And he seemed to catch the ball on almost every possession in the second half for when they did something decent. Mm-hmm. Like, like even – okay, so even the, even the last possession of regulation for Kansas City where they tied it at 19, the first play went to Kelsey, I think, for 11 yards. He was wide open. Like, how is that man wide open? You sitting. know where he, he – like, if you don't know that he's going to go to his security blanket on the first play to get something moving in the right direction, I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. I thought I – don't, I don't know the name of the defensive coordinator for San Fran, but I think he fucking shit on himself in the well, second half, especially the – Especially in the last, especially those last two drives, we can sit here and say that their defense may have been tired, but he had one where he blitzed everybody and nobody got through. Mm-hmm. Like that's insane, and, and, and I don't, I didn't think he needed to blitz on that play. Um, there was one. It was third down and ten from the from the. It was third and ten from the Kansas City forty-one yard line. The last possession of regulation. And San Fran looked slightly confused. I don't know why. Instead of calling timeout and getting their stuff together, they didn't. And next thing you know, Kelsey catches the ball about 12 yards downfield. There's no one covering him. The one guy who you got to cover, no one's covering Travis Kelsey. And that third and 10 ends up being a 13-yard game for Kelsey. If you go look at it, if you go re- yeah. roll it, they looked like they were a little bit disheveled. I'm calling timeout. Really? Let's get our stuff together. And he's wide open, like anybody else. If you make, if, if they don't get a completion there, you're looking at fourth and 10 from the 41 with a chance to win the Super Bowl. Really? Instead, he gets a first down, and a few plays later, it's oh, really? then, yeah. As a deep coordinator, I'm going to tell you how I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to sleep saying, well, I let Kelsey beat me because we were sitting in the zone, or I let Kelsey beat me because I put one on one on him when the whole year we've been talking about the Kansas City receiving court not being good enough. So I'm I don't care how good or bad my corners are, I'm leaving them on the island. Like y'all figure it out. But my safety and my linebacker, we're taking Kelsey out the game. We might even bump him on the line of scrimmage with my DNs. We might just bomb him. We might just Hit him as soon as he come off the line of scrimmage or anything. I might put somebody in the press, and then we're just going to still run a def- different coverage. Like, you stay underneath, and you got you got a man up high. Don't worry about it. Slice everything he does. If he breaks inside, slice under. If he breaks outside, slice under. You got somebody protecting you over the top. Don't worry about that. There's so much different ways you could run coverage. With him. You could bracket him inside and outside. You could bracket him just pressing him, and then have somebody up top. Like, you can do multiple things when you're sitting in zone or covering him one-on-one. That is the epitome of, of I, I just, I just don't get it. Like you don't do that. You don't. You had two weeks to come up with something for him. After he just showed you last week that he was back, that he can play ball, that he's not losing the step that we thought he lost, that he's still here. Like, what are we doing here in the biggest moment, the biggest game? I'm not going to sleep in my own bed at night like that. That guy won't beat me if Rasheed Rice. Beat me, I'd be like, clap my eyes, shook his hand. If MDS beat me, I shake their hand and say, "Congratulations, y'all earned it." But not like that. No way, no how. Because because I tell you what, like that was the first one. It was third and ten from the forty-one, and no one's covering him. He's wide open. Then they had third and seven from the thirty-three, and I believe that was at the end of uh, end of regulation. Pretty sure that was end of regulation where Kelsey runs a crossing route and there are five yards. Be- no, it's like he's in, sing- he's in man coverage. Yes. The linebacker is five yards behind him. He gets 22 yards down to the 11-yard line. And right there, you're thinking, oh, my God, it's they're going to win this game right now. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to yeah. win this game right now. And, 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 you're, and, and it's just, again, that's another play where how is the guy that you know that's going to get the ball in man coverage – on a cross with a linebacker on him. I mean, he was yeah. burnt by five yards. And he was outside level. He just it ran was out awful. Him. So I don't and, know. And so, and so instead yeah. of having a potential 45 to 50 yard field goal attempt to tie the game, 
give him a first down. If you make look, if you make some 45, 50 yard field goal, he'll get whatever they want. That's still a long field. Mm-hmm. That will always be a long field goal. Yeah. Guys miss those all the time. Especially it's the yeah. Super Bowl, heavy pressure. You never know. Bad yeah. snap. The last, you, the last one he picked was kind of low. Very low. And I and I asked you, it was 57 yards. Like, are they even trying to block this they kick? They tried to, but he, he kind of hit it in the perfect spot. Like, he like went, right like, between he two people. But what I mean, like, try to block it, like, there's no one in the middle. Yeah, sometimes. Jump straight up. Sometimes you have a jumper, but sometimes you just have to rush just. Like, why don't forward. I have my six foot five wide receiver or someone who has who has lift so, down back there to just jump in the air in the middle and make you, him kick it over me? Usually, usually coaches have that. But most coaches save that till the end of the game for some reason rather than just all. Well, that was the end of the game. That, that, that was the end of the game. I mean, that was second half. Sorry, that was second half. But yeah, so I mean, because they had situations I mean, where they had them in third and long or second and long. No, oh, second and long. It was second and longs, and they let them get it to third and manageable. Like, yeah, and, 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 over and over again, over and over again. Like, event zones. So I'm like, what is it? Like, what are your thoughts? What? Some what are your? Th- I'm sorry, go ahead. What are your th- what are your thoughts of the fact that all these players post game from San Francisco because this is embarrassing on so many levels. But what are your thoughts on the fact that you have players that are coming out in post game saying I didn't know the rules of overtime? Uh, if if there was ever a moment to shut the fuck up, <laughs> that was it. I'm not getting on TV and saying, oh, damn, I didn't know the rules. Like, even if I didn't know the rules, I'd admit I'm like, oh, it's just unfortunate things ain't go our way. You know, that's how I'd be sometimes in the game. You know, all our minds were locked in and trying to get the win, and just we just didn't come out with the win. That's what you say. <laughs> I go out there on, on national television in front of this audience and tell these people, well, you know, we really didn't go over the rules. You know, we, I mean, it just sounds like you're unprepared. Even though me and you both agreed, that really had no effect on, on the game anyway because they were going to get the ball back. It, it, it's nothing that it could have changed. Like, they were trying to score a touchdown anyway. So, and they had the ball first. They were going to kick the field goal in that situation for the most part unless they just were thinking, hey, if we go for it down here just because we don't want to give Mahomes the chance to just go down there and kick a field goal or whatever the situation is, even if we do miss it, he starts back down here at the eight yard line, and he has to drive at least sixty yards to get a field goal. That's the only way you go for it in that situation. But that had no bearing on the game. We already talked about it, and I think there's no way in hell I'm taking the ball first. I want them to have the ball first, because then we could just come back. That's that's a, that's a strategic component. Because like if, even if they, if you get the stop, if you get the stop, and they punt it to you, not all you need is three. <laughs> that's that's simple. Like you get the ball first. Like no matter what you score, they they know that they need seven. They could go for it on fourth down. And they you, have to do it. you want you want my real opinion? I think we have come into an era of complete softness where we have to make everybody happy and do this thing that people want to like. This it has to be fair. Everyone should get the ball. You know what? Back in the day, people got mad about the Josh Allen thing with uh, Patrick Mahomes where he scores for 13 seconds, they come back, they score, game's over, right? But he put a touchdown on the board because that was the rule. It was you get a score, a touchdown, or a field, if you kick a field goal, they get, they get the ball. Now, my whole problem with this rule is because before that, that was when Brady beat um, the Falcons because their defense was completely toast, and the, the, the game was over as well when he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl. It used to be just sudden death, you know, you you have a flip of a coin. First off, I don't like the fact that someone has to call it. I think you just have a two sided coin. One that says, uh, "What's the t- I mean, AFC, NFC on on one side." No one's calling shit. This isn't a regular season game. Flip the coin, whatever it lands, that's who gets the ball. Now I understand people like the fairness, da 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 da. Whatever. I will say this. I am not. I don't have the biggest. Pr- first of all. The fact that those guys don't know the rules is embarrassing. It's an indictment on them as players. This is their job. This is your profession. If you didn't read the rule book, because every year rules change. Yeah. There's not very many that change, but there's usually a handful of rules that change. And this is one of the rules that changed. I think it changed last year, actually. Um, I mean, Rudy, when you go over those, when you do go over the rule changes at the beginning of the year, it's in mother freaking August. Oh, I, I, look, man. So, 
So you kind why, of well, why would you for, why would you forget? Because you, it's kind of slipping your mind. You have you know you still have well, you have week one all the way to week seventeen or week eighteen because you get a bye week and you play seventeen games. So you kind of could slip your mind. So I can see how that happened with a new rule like that. And and it really isn't that much of a difference. All it's telling you from the regular season to the to the to the playoffs is that what? the other team, no matter what, because in the regular season you score a touchdown is over. But in the I, playoffs, I, it's just changing yeah. now. I, I, I get that, but oh, go ahead. That's the one thing. But, if you kick the field goal, they still get the ball back. But other yeah, things, because you were saying in a regular season, if you score a touchdown, the game is over in regular season. In this case, so everyone always takes the ball first. I'm gonna be real with you. The the Niners defense was completely gassed. That's why he took the ball. He can sit here and say whatever he wants, and I agree with him in the fact of look, we score, they score. We're getting the ball back yeah. to score first yeah, to win. Score. Now, I thought his defense was gas. They got they gave up the field goal right before that. They went right down the field. Gotcha. They were zooted. They had nothing in them. The Niners getting the ball allowed those guys to rest. I mean, heck, which what was it? it was a long drive. One of the one of the DBs really gave the rest when he came in that holding, and that was holding. He tackled. Him. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was holding, completely holding. He tackled him. It's a good call. Now. They, that's a long drive. They do. You get down to the nine-yard line. See, this is where I go back into my thought process of you took the ball first for purposes of putting seven on the board, not three. Let's be real. You're not the one that to put three because you and I know that you give him Patrick Mahomes four downs. <laughs> like, he done found you know, it. He found it, though, and he started rolling. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he was going. And – and it's one of those things where you're sitting here saying, you got to put seven on the board. This is where I go. This is where I become Dan Campbell because I'm, I'm probably going to, because they got stuck. It was second and four. They get stuffed on the running play. I would have run the ball again. And, and then I'm fourth and probably one or two. Now I have a decision to make. Oh, Am I going to go for it? I may have gone. I may have gone. Yeah. I may have gone for it on fourth down. And the reason being, they're at the nine yard line. They got to drive fifty yards to get in field goal range. Yeah, you know they're 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 pushed back in their territory. They're not going to be too. It may not be too risky they can't, because they can't be you make safety or anything. Yeah, yeah. You you're not going to be risky. You're going to be now. Mind you, he may have hit Travis Kelsey four straight times for ten yards a pop, yeah, and he might have. He so, might have, but that moment. I, you're of just getting two first downs, get out the hole, and if we punt it, that's a, that's a success. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sitting here thinking maybe you go for it because when you kick the field goal, I mean, I'm sitting there saying uh, Patrick Mahomes is about to win this game. <laughs> he's about to he's going to drive down for a touchdown, and and I'm feeling this, and I'm saying he's about to drive it down. They're not getting near him now. It, it seems like even when they get second and long, they're giving him eight yards on second and long, make it third and two. You know, and then we're like third and two. They got third and one. It was fourth and one. Then it's like it, it, it just seemed like. Yep. I think it's embarrassing as a professional athlete to not know the rules of your game. I think that the fact that people are going to blame Kyle Shanahan, and he, if he hasn't gone over this with his team, then he does deserve blame. But the problem that happens when that when that, when stuff like that comes out, it's embarrassing to your head coach. Mm-hmm. It, it it makes your head coach look really bad. Yeah. And it makes him look really unprepared in the minds of the public, even though, in my opinion, he wanted to take the ball. Yeah. I think he would have taken the – I don't think his players have anything to do with no. him taking the ball or not taking the ball. Yeah. Um, I understand not taking the ball. I get it because you make a stop and they yeah. punt. You get the ball to 40 potentially or the 30. You, you know, 35, 40, you only get to get 30 yards to get in field goal range potentially. I get all that. I mean, to not to not know, to not know both, the rules. They go both ways because you take the ball, you score. Mm-hmm. The pressure's mm-hmm. on the other team, even though they got exactly now. Yeah, they didn't get three points on that drive. They lose the game. Exactly, exactly. So they were they were literally one yard away from yeah losing the game. So yeah, everybody could look back and be a Monday. Monday coach. Monday morning, Monday morning Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, Monday morning quarterback, Monday morning coach, I guess, because we we're actually coaching. And we can mm-hmm. look back and nitpick. Oh, that, this, this, this. At the end of the day, they were in the game right here. And all it took was 
one more play, one more play, about five more times. It was five times that they just needed one, one more, more play. play. They had one all more. offense. Just one more first down. They had no. all just, just one more stop. They had them on second and long, third and long. Just one more where you don't give up nine, ten, twelve yards on this on this play. They had they had like yeah. five or six. Just one more. We just need one more. <laughs> they had a few of those. That's gonna that's gonna be the the San Francisco mantra in the offseason. One, one more play. Just one more play. Because I'm telling you right now, they go to the weight room. Just one, one more rep. More rep. One more rep. When they go I, over I, the rules, let's go over one more time. When we go over the rules, <laughs> one more time. I, okay, you've been on the you've been on the side of winning and losing a championship. How would you feel today? Um, I mean, because you won, you you won three. Yeah. Did you lose? You were on the you were injured though, so you didn't yeah, play. So it's a it, different feeling. It was a different feeling just because I got hurt and I knew what I brought to the team, even though. A lot of people who not in our locker room or anywhere knew what I really brought to the team. Like I was just probably a glue guy, happy in the atmosphere. Or I kind of ran the back of the second secondary where, you know, I made all the calls or I helped out the person who was next to me or to the right of me. I just made everybody feel comfortable because I was just that one of those people. So I know if I play, we don't really lose in that situation, especially how we lost that game. So that kind of hurt from that perspective. But um, the other perspective of just losing the championship, it just sucks. Even though I didn't play, like you're like, damn, we were there. We did everything all year. We was the best team all year. And we came here, and we couldn't get it done because all we needed to do was get one more stop. And that's and that's and you were and you were playing with a 10-7 and 7 team or something like that, a team that wasn't that good all year? No, 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 that year. That no, year. was this past year. That Oh, the, the team I was just on? No, okay. So the year that you guys lost, the year I did, got were they were they were they a good team that you played that kid, all year? We started off like eight. No, no not your team. The other team, the team that you lost. Oh, to. the team that we lost to. They um, was it in Montreal? No, Toronto. They was like eleven and seven or twelve. But you guys were like fourteen and two, right? Yeah, we were like sixteen, fifteen and three. Well, okay. Right. Yeah, we, yeah, lost, we lost a couple games after I got hurt, but like because we already had <clears> the <throat> division and everything. Like by week fucking thirteen, like we were chilling. Like, like tomorrow, we're playing in the championship in the soccer. My soccer team, and we won on Thursday, three to one. And no we're undefeated. There's no worse. Huh? I'm just going. I'm just going. There's no yeah. worse feeling than losing. Especially when you're the when you're the, when you know that you're the better team. When you know you're the better team, that's probably you know you're better. That's probably even harder to stomach. Like you can't like for the next week, you can't do anything. Like it's always on your mind. You go to sleep, you think about it. You watch stupid TVs and you see freaking Taylor Swift kissing Kelsey and you see freaking Mahomes running around and you see Andy Reid eating burgers for fun and he's laughing it up like he's not one burger away from whatever. I'm not going to say anything. A heart attack? Yes. And everybody's just chummy. I thought thought Travis Kelsey was going to hurt him. He ran him over. He was startled. (laughs) He looked like he's seen a a mugger come up to him. I'm not going to say what race that he thought it was. But maybe Travis Kelsey got that new haircut that he has. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the fade that he created out of nowhere? The, um, the, 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 the Kelsey fade? Yeah, and he saw that haircut and was like, whoa. And then he realized it was, it was, it was Kelsey. Oh, okay, that's, okay. But at first, that's he was crazy. startled. What the fuck? <laughs> like, if anybody else did that, it might have been, um, we've been talking about it right now. But I guess he earns that. He earns to be able to go to his coach like that. In that moment, like I'm not gonna get mad at that. It's the heat of the moment. He want to be in the game. He's one of your top dogs. He earned the moment to go. He hasn't really done that before to to get a little round. He, he did it earlier when he slammed his helmet yeah. and and and, 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 and they'd be like, but if I would have did that, yeah, you've been doing that bitching and crying all year in your whole yeah. career, and it, it just looks wrong. And you go overboard a few times. Mm-hmm. And people gonna be like, well, you're just talking shit because you're talking about. Our people, but no, I'm just keeping it real. Like sometimes we be we be wilding, we be wilding, be we be wilding. So, um, I didn't do this at the beginning, but again, thank you to all our subscribers. I'm wait, I'm 43 minutes in, 44 minutes in. I should have done this like a minute in. 
Thank you to our subscribers. We appreciate you. We just broke 100 subscribers on Sunday, yesterday, in three and a half weeks. So, I mean, you know, we're new and we're, and we're going to celebrate those small victories. Yeah. You know, keep supporting us, sharing our videos, liking them, commenting. Um, we did have some new stuff up that went up with, with Nick and I with the, the LeBron stuff. And we've gotten some heavy traction and a lot of feedback on that. We appreciate it. I'm thinking we'll have another one going on. You know, he showed up to somewhere. Yeah, he sh yeah magically the guy that couldn't show up to Kobe Bryant's uh you know uh statue unveiling man managed to be at the Super Bowl like you know the things that are priorities in our lives and and you wonder why people think what they think about this guy like who don't like him he gives us ammunition he gi I'm I'm one of them I don't like him um he gives us ammunition because you showed up at a at the Super Bowl. I mean, don't you play basketball? I mean, I guess that was a day off and you could, you know, leave. And then, if they, do they play tonight? Let's see. Do they play tonight? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. No. They don't play tonight? I don't think so. I don't okay. think I've seen them on the schedule this time. No, they didn't play tonight. So I'm sure they play tomorrow, uh, which gave him an extra. I mean, may, who knows? Maybe Adam Silver scheduled that for him because they're all like bosom buddies and stuff. Oh, no. You know, they put, you know, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Gonna be but, but 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 like seriously, he went to the Super Bowl and he and he couldn't go to Kobe's uh, thing for for ten minutes. Nonetheless, um, we appreciate your feedback. Like, subscribe, and comment. Final words, Nick. What are your what, you know anything that you can take? What do you see for next year for for the NFL? Can the Chiefs? God, please God. Can the Chiefs three Pete? Rudy. Their defense is pretty young, and they have the best quarterback. They have a chance. <laughs> I, it's unfortunate because we're going to see – oh, we're going to see Taylor Swift for another year. And I'm not mad at the NFL because they're making money off of it. Of course, they're going to keep showing her. But, Lord, give me strength. Please have mercy on my little soul. You don't think they'll break up before August? Um, I mean, she, I mean, I mean, she doesn't have a history of like like making albums after she breaks up. I mean, they possibly will, but that's not my place to say. And I don't care. I mean, I only care because then she won't be on the screen next year. But you saw who broke. You saw who broke up. Who? Oh, I you didn't somebody, see it. Somebody just. Re you you didn't see it. I seen somebody. I just don't remember the name. I just literally seen somebody broke up. Who was it? Who? I'm trying to do a. I'm trying to do a the, the silhouette. What is that? I'm trying to do, oh, trying to do the, silu the oh, silhouette. The silhouette. Talking about Jordan. Jordan's uh son. son and, and, they, and Larsa. Yes. Yeah. They broke up. As yeah. expected, we knew this they, that crap wasn't gonna work. But like, we got the entertainment for I mean, social media entertainment for a year. Uh, yeah, they blamed uh, Michael Jordan for the breakup because um, oh. he didn't he didn't endorse the, the relationship publicly. And you know, you, younger the son says, you, um, you think? <laughs> and, and the son says he was just joking around. But apparently, that specific moment had a lot of contention internally. What's what I read today in in the gossip sheets. Um, oh my so God. I'm going in that direction, but, uh, yeah, Marcus Jordan finally was probably told by his father, I'm writing you out of the will. If you don't get rid of this individual, so because you cannot produce me grandchildren with a 50 year old woman. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I play with this guy, no matter what their relationship is now, I play with this guy for 10 his, 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 yeah, Scotty. Ten yeah. years, and I mean, I'm, I would guess that they were kind of close, you know, at some point. Other like that at some point, and I'm pretty sure that she's seen a young, whatever Jordan his name is. Was like five? Yeah. Marcus Jordan was like five years old. It was around the house, and for y'all to be dating thirty years later, it's wow. Like, how did that, how did, it, how did that in your mind, in her mind, first of all, in her mind, she's just, we're not going to go here, but we are, we are, because she has to be the slowest 
person in the world, or she just don't care because she's gonna get keep get keep getting paid from being in the media. Well, you know what she you know what she did? She dated a, a one NBA player who was her son's teammate with the Lakers. Oh, Malik, Malik Beasley, I think Malik Beasley. While he was married, no less. <sighs> like, how do you how do you how do you deal with that as a kid who's twenty two years old, a rookie in the NBA? And you know that your teammate has knocked up, you know, smashed your he's mom. There, he's out there pounding your mom every day. <laughs> and, and, he's, and your teammate's married while he did it. Like, I, I mean. He's out there. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> Not, knocking her off the cat back to every night. <laughs> I, I just don't, I just don't understand. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 lady, there's so many young guys you can go get. Trust uh-huh. me. So many young guys you can go get. No, you want to go do the stuff that would create as much drama. Stay and, 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 and they don't, and, they don't and, care about nobody else but themselves at that moment. Oh, clearly, clearly. I just thought that was funny. And that's why I wonder how you know. I don't know that that you know if if the if the, the, the Swifty Kelsey thing if it lasts to August, then can we stomach another four months of it after that? Hey, and then it's basketball season. I'm so happy. But I got, I got, I got one, I got one final thought on this, on, on, on this game. It was a great game. It, it was a great, great game. I, I, that, that was the type of football I enjoy watching. If that game had been forty-two to thirty-eight, I would have probably wanted to turn it off because that's unwatch for me. That's unwatchable football, right? I can't stomach that type of football. It's not enjoyable for me. I like watching defenses hit. I like watching defenses make plays. I like watching both. Do I want to watch a 7-3 game? No. Did I enjoy the 13-3 Pats, Rams a few years back? No. But this is the type of game where <clears throat> they're fighting for every yard, they're fighting for every play, and, and it's those that one mistake that costs you a, a championship. Not It doesn't have to be the play you made. It's the play they botched. <laughs> like, that punt is the ball game. Extra point. Those two plays cost San Francisco the Super Bowl, period. Now, Patrick Mahomes. He did it. I know. I know. I mean, that guy, Bill Barnwell, he was right. I I, I can't even understand it. Your post had 4,241 likes. Liked it. That guy, that guy jumped on your post and my post last night and we reminded us. He was ready. And first of all, you gotta be a goddamn loser to be sitting waiting on a post of somebody for five weeks to 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 do that. That's just a little bit odd. But he had he clearly had it saved. Now, four thousand two hundred forty one people agreed with me. Agree with me. Like none of us thought the Chiefs were gonna win, but Patrick, but Patrick fucking Mahomes. God damn, he is that dude. He is unbelievable. He can play like shit for two and a half, even three quarters. And in two possessions, win the Super Bowl, win MVP. Yeah. I mean, when he, when he has to make a play in this, situ- in this time of year, maybe not in the regular season because they did lose games. But in these games, you cannot... Play that dude and have less than a 14 point lead with two minutes to go in the game. I'm sorry, 10 point lead. If you don't lead by at least two scores with two minutes to go, you're probably going to lose. I got one more thing to say. He's a bad mother. I mean, I, I, I've shit on him. I, he's, I still don't like his voice. I still can't stand his what wo- I can't stand none of that shit. But holy lord, that dude is so damn good. Hey, shout out to Brock Purdy, man. I don't care what nobody else is saying. He showed me some Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes last night. I was as I watched him move around and maneuver around and make some throws. It looked like Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. He he mm-hmm. he has something special. I don't care what what that other quarterback. He had the played, lead. Who played? He way had way the way. lead twice in the fourth they quarter. Him in the Super Bowl after a 15, 15 to one season, called him the <laughs> manager. That guy can play. He can flat out play. He can make all the throws. Shout out to him. Um, just didn't get it done. Like he wins that Super Bowl, people are going to be talking about him for a long time. But I mean, he's still a solid player. I like it. it, it it's a shame because they did have the lead twice. Like he did his job. 
Yeah. Actually, he hit the lead three times. He did his job. Yeah. Touchdown, field goal, field goal. They had the lead. Defense, make a stop. Find it. Do your job. You did your job in the first half. Make one stop here. And they didn't. And Mahomes is why they didn't make stops. I think their coordinator botched some stuff up, but uh, Mahomes was Mahomes does not let you make mistakes and not make you pay for them. Yep. He makes you pay for them. Yep. And God bless him. He's an amazing quarterback. I pray I don't got to watch it. If they go to the Super Bowl next year, oh, God. That means that means the Dolphins didn't make it. No, um, I mean, I mean Lamar Jackson could take some notes from that game. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes used his legs a lot in that game. Like, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to use what what God giving you. Like, I don't care what people are talking about you. Oh, he can't throw, and you want to prove that you're a pocket pet. Take the f off. Like, they're spying Mahomes, and he's still running past spies. They're spying Purdy, and you're faster than both of them. Take off. Be be great. I'm sorry that it's coming back to Lamar, but uh, we can wrap this up, Rudy. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, again, thank you all. Again, it's Nick Taylor, three-time CFL Grey Cup champion. I'm Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. Check out. Make sure you follow us on all of our social medias. We'll be listed in the, in the, in the description. As well as, again, like, follow, subscribe, and share our videos. This is our Super Bowl special. We will be back this week with a, with our podcast dropping on Friday, completely separate of this. But we will probably be talking heavy, heavy basketball. We might drop Thursday this week. Yeah, we might. Because, you know, Wednesday, we re- we're going to record actually tomorrow. Because Wednesday, we have Valentine's Day. And while some, of, some men won't give their wives and girlfriends gifts, I highly recommend you do because you might not have a happy week. (laughs) And no matter how you try to slice it, you better do something that day because, you know, it is a uh, department store created holiday, but we're screwed. We got to do what we got to do to make our women happy. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know if you're following what our comrade was talking about a couple weeks ago, but I highly recommend you take your uh, wife out somewhere, buy her something and, that you conversation know. was off here. <laughs> all right. So, all right, we're out. Come on now, the podcast. We will see you this week.